welcome to another episode of the Brangus Beat. I'm Kyle Dykes, Commercial Marketing Coordinator for the International Brangus Breeders Association, and I'm here with Dr. Tommy Perkins, our Executive Vice President for the Association. Kyle, appreciate the opportunity to come and visit about genomic enhanced EPDs we just released last week. Excellent, Doc. So for those that aren't fully involved in this technology, give us a little bit of background on what the basics are of genomic enhanced EPDs and what their purpose is in the cattle business. It's been a pretty long, drawn-out process we've gone through, but uh, initially we went to the membership and asked for what we'll call foundation or legacy-type animals to do DNA testing uh, on, and that would be a multitude of uh, products out there. That started probably three years ago, and we've culminated into the release of enhancement of their EPDs based off of these SNP markers that were released from those particular tests we ran. Okay. And how does this affect the members who are going to start utilizing this method and the information that they gather from this technology? Well, I think the thing that they'll most recognize is the improvement in accuracy of their EPDs, particularly in those what I'll call low-accuracy, non-proven uh, cattle. Uh, it would be just like taking a calf and them producing 10 progeny uh, as newborns. We know that's not practical or possible, uh, but the accuracies will be increased five to tenfold. Uh, based off of one DNA test. So how has the work been done for our members uh, in terms of making this happen for the Brangus world? Well, I think what we generally go out and say to the public is we on these, what we'll just call replacement females or a cow that's going to go into the herd and produce multiple calves, we're asking that you do a low density SNP panel on her, which is what we'll call an LD30, you get about 30,000 markers. But if she's going to be a potential donor cow in the future, we're asking you to do a high density chip, and that's going to be a 150K uh, test panel. So it depends on, on where that cow winds up in the population, or it, as far as that goes, the bull. If it's going to be an AI sire, we want you to do a high density test on that, which is going to yield you 150,000 markers. Uh, what most don't understand is we're going to take these low density markers or SNPs and we're going to impute them up to a 50k. So we're going to impute everything, the low densities all the way up to a high density so that they're all on the same level playing field. Okay. And who do we do this through? Okay, the company of choice would be GeneSeq. That's who we actually uh, can get the most data uh, for the least amount of money. So if we go to GeneSeq we can get a high density 150,000 uh, marker panel for 80, I believe it's $80. Uh, but you can use Zoetis if you choose to, and you can get a 50,000 uh, marker uh, product there, again, for about an $80 cost. Uh, and again, we impute everything to the 50K, but in the future, I think that the 150K is going to yield much more results as we move forward. Okay. And for those breeders that plan to use this in the future, how will this affect the way they do business? What ultimately you know, how will it help them market their livestock and what is the value in this information for their herd? Well, you, they're going to use it two ways. One is to market the product. I mean, the, certainly it's going to add what I'll call add value to those cattle that have DNA enhanced EPDs, uh, especially these younger cattle. So if they're going to have a, cow, uh, a sale this fall and they're going to be selling yearling bulls or 18 month old bulls, uh, those accuracies are going to go from 0 0.1, 0 0.15 to 0.35 to 0.45 on these non-proven bulls. So that gives a commercial bull buyer the opportunity to, to really make greater genetic selection earlier in these lives and, and probably give them more confidence that they're buying a bull that they're actually looking for. Uh, now if we look down the, the road in terms of you know a, a purebred guy using those, uh, I think it's gonna help them make some really serious decisions on corrective mating. Uh, the way these genes are gonna align and I think they're again, let's say they've got three flush mate brothers they're going to be able to select the very best of those three flush mate bulls, brothers, uh, the one that's going to have the genes to pass on to the next generation. That's going to become their AI sire. The other two, same genetics basically, but we know because of the SNPs that they don't have the same markers that's going to pass down the project. Maybe they become commercial bulls. And there's another added benefit to the high density 150K marker, which I haven't talked about yet, uh, but it also includes a a SNP marker for the Y chromosome fragment. Okay. Uh, the research out of Clay Center in Nebraska is suggesting that these females, particularly heifers, that don't uh, breed early in a breeding season, they may skip the first time, they may skip the second time, get bred the third time. What they're finding is they have fragments of the Y chromosome, which they shouldn't have because that's a male component, but because of crossing over, they're getting part of that Y chromosome. So what is, it's going to allow us to do is to identify those females carrying those Y chromosomes and make them a end product for harvest as opposed to be a breeding female. 
Uh, and the really cool part about that is if we're doing AI search, for example, and we find out that they actually have the X chromosome they got from their dam actually carries a portion of that Y chromosome, mm -hmm. that's probably not going to make a very good, he's not going to be able to produce very good females because we automatically know he's got to give that X chromosome to his daughters. We know it's going to have part of that Y chromosome, therefore should impair their reproductive performance for their lifetime. Uh, so I do think that's the coolest thing about what we're seeing now. Uh, but to get that, you're going to have to get the 150K or do an individual test for the Y chromosome fragment. Awesome. You get so much information for a little less input, basically. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And we'll probably find that the DNA is going to move us into accounting for what traditionally we've called heterosis or hybrid vigor. Uh, what you're going to find is these SNPs are going to be able to be used to account for breed purity. Uh, just because we've got a 5 8 3 animal doesn't mean that it's 5 8 Angus necessarily in 3 8 Brahmin. We may have selected genes through multi-generations that it's really, maybe it's 87% Angus, yeah. whereas it's supposed to be an 87.5% Angus, for example. So I think it's going to tell us a lot in terms of calculating heterosis or hybrid vigor moving forward in our, our sire summaries. Once again, like you said, getting that overall accuracy yeah. on pretty much everything across the board. Um, narrowed down a little bit better. Just improves our selection tools. Absolutely. Um, so we've talked about the general background of genomic enhanced EPDs and we've talked about the benefit and the value of them. Um, I'm sure we're going to have a lot more questions down the road, you know, coming into the office here. Um, and we're certainly happy to answer any questions that you might have. Give us a call here at the office. My last question would be, how do you differentiate a genomic enhanced animal from a standard test animal? in our registry? Excellent question. Uh, Emilio Silvas, our uh, programmer, has done a really good job of identifying those on the portal, whether that's uh, on a computer at your office or on your handheld devices. Uh, they'll have a little DNA helix okay. beside the EPD. If it's enhanced by genomics, if it's not there, that means it is a normal traditional EPD. So look for that little red, white, and blue, I believe, double, mm -hmm. kind of, it's just a DNA helix. If that's present next to that EPD, it is, it is an enhanced EPD. Excellent. Well, Doc, thank you so much for joining us here today. It. And uh, we're just real excited about this technology that we can move forward with. And we hope to get a lot of feedback. And if you have any questions, once again, let us know. Call or email us here at the office, and we'd be happy to help you. Also, look for the new journal coming out this month, as well as events coming going on through the summer and into the fall. Thank you very much. This is Kyle Dykes and Dr. Tommy Perkins signing off for the Brangus Beat.